Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's fur video. We're going to have a look at the weather. And it's 10 to 14 days for today's fur video. Day 10 will take us to the 4th of April. And we'll be able to, we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the Exeter GFS. And you should have ensembles, maybe on track of the weeks. We'll have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. Gets us into the second half of April. I'll get some of that for you in a moment. Just save that first of video shares at 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. And we've also released the extended European outlook as well. Please like, share, and subscribe on all of today's videos and content. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that for Gals Weather. Gals Weather this. I've got to say hello and thank you so much for your donation to David Collins. Hello, David. So much for your incredible donation to uh, Gals Weather this, my friend. Absolutely unbelievable. Thank you so so much for the support, David. has been a long-term supporter of uh, Gauss Weathervid. So, uh, again, thank you, thank you so much, David, uh, for uh, for your donation and for supporting uh, Gauss, Gauss Weathervid. Big, big shout out uh, to you, my friend. If you would like to give a donation to uh, Gauss Weathervid, all you need to do is go to Gauss Weathervid's PayPal page, sign into your PayPal account. Link is in the description down there, by the way. <laughs> um, so, uh, you can buy the link in the description, sign into your PayPal account, uh, and then uh, give whatever donation you'd like to Gauss, Gauss Weathervid. But to Think out. Um, we will shout you out in the videos if you want. Well, maybe you'd like a shout out uh, or a mention for your website, for your uh, YouTube channel, uh, you know, for your business. We're happy to do that. You might want us to pass on a message to someone, a loved one, a hated one. I don't know. Maybe you want Gal to tell someone you're going to divorce from. <laughs> I could give it a go, I could give it a go, I don't know. No, we like positivity, though, really, on the channel. But, you know, whatever message you want, if you want me to pass on a message to somebody, I could do that as well. We have had that uh, occasionally on the channel, actually. So, um, you know, uh, whatever sort of uh, shout-out you want, then uh, just let me know. But, Matt, thank you so much, Mavis, thank you so much, everyone, for all of the support. It's helping to pay for the channel and, uh, you know, helping me to be able to do the content. So, thank you, thank you so much, everyone, and a special thank you to... David, lovely, lovely David Collins. Thank you so much, my friend. Right, let's start off with the vid page. Let's begin with the latest one back from EarthNoSchool.net. We've got high pressure. <clears throat> Excuse me, sitting uh, over the country really with uh, low pressure away to the uh, north. So we're back under a ridge. It's going to turn more unsettled at the end of the week. But high pressure is never going to be all that far away. Central temperature is now sitting at 7.5. That's 1.8 degree above 61 to 99 average. It's provisional to uh, yesterday, 24th March, turning into uh, another mild month. These are the GFS of rare temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're at London today. The red line is the 30 year of rare temperature average for London. We're starting, oops, we're starting off above average at the moment. We're going to get a drop in the up rare temperatures towards the weekend. And then they'll lift up again into uh, next week, actually. So, end of March, beginning of April, looking relatively mildish there within the GFS. Other models are disagreeing with that. So, uncertainty goes on <laughs> uh, through the uh, first week, 10 days of April. What about that shortly? In the yeah, very extended range, the first week into the second week of April, then we do see a lot of scatter coming through. Precipitation wise, well, we've got a lot of dry weather over the uh, next week, 10 days or so. And even beyond that, although there are some precipitation spikes, not that many. So this dry spring of 2025 continues. Temperature normally is next five days are above average to the 30th of March. Six, 10 day temperature normally is also slightly above average. And the 10 to 14 day temperature anomaly is a little bit above average, especially so. In the north, precipitation anomalies for the next seven days, up to the 1st of April, are coming out drier than normal. And the 8 to 14 day precipitation anomalies also drier than average. So mild and dry, basically. Um, not especially exciting. But let's start going through the chart. That's all GFS, so GFS, GFS. Let, uh, not other models are disagreeing with that. So let's start going through the chart dates. We saw the UK met Euro run. It's looking for midnight on Friday. The low pressure will bring a band of rain, actually. So Samples and east was across the country. Then we're into those cooler, uh, showery west northwesterly winds through the weekend. Looking quite wet, windy up in the north, mostly dry. 
We're down in the south. Only part of next week, you get a rich building to the southwest. Low pressure out to the northwest. That brings more wet weather into the north and west. But south of the east should be uh, most right. It's a pretty changeable pattern that we're in there. But always close to higher pressure down in the south. So actually, it's the south and south east mostly dry. But I think the north and west will be quite a lot more unsettled, if that's right. Well, this is how the uh, icon model is looking. Again, we're bringing, a weather, uh, we're bringing a weather system through the country on Friday. Some showery rain. Then we go cooler and with showers into the weekend. Early next week start to raise pressure to the south. That builds north was much more strong than the UK Met. This show through the early part of next week. So uh, whereas like the UK Met actually looks quite unsettled particularly so to the north and the west next Tuesday. Icon looks uh, completely anti-cyclonic and high pressure looks like he's trying to get to Scandinavia as well. So that's a significant difference between the UK Met and Icon. Very uncertain what's going Going on, what's going on? What's going on next week? Right, well, let's add the KMA to the mix, see how that one's looking in all of this model mayhem. Again, rather showery conditions through the early part of um, the weekend. And then on into next week, well, high pressure to south, low pressure is away to north. High pressure building quite strongly uh, with the KMA as well. So, um, <clears throat> Excuse me, KMA much more towards high pressure. By the 6th of April, uh, as far as we get to uh, with it, we eventually find a big Scandinavian high setting up. Looks like we're going to have a go at trying to pull some colder air in uh, from the east. So the cold air is a long way east. It's like over the Baltic Sea states and into Western Russia. So we need to wait a few more days, actually, beyond that for it to uh, properly cold. But anyway, uh, the KMA much more towards high pressure next week. Right, let's move on to the GFS, which we know is looking pretty mile, but let's see how that happens. So, weather system coming south east on Friday, bring wet weather in with it into the weekend. High pressure south, low pressure to the north. Then high pressure builds strongly through the early part of uh, next week. High pressure then goes to Scandinavia uh, by the middle of next week. We're about to try and pull in some cold easterly winds, but then the high pressure slips back down across the country. <laughs> so, uh, typically, the uh, cold easterly winds actually end up around the Balkans, going down towards Greece. We find ourselves under this area of high pressure, probably a bit chilly by night, and about high pressure, but mostly dry, not too bad by day. Uh, eventually, we pull the heights out into the Atlantic and start setting up a cooler or a colder northwesterly flow. So, going cooler and more unsettled into the second week of April. Well, that's a very long way off, though. GFS 6 there, by comparison, brings that weather system southeast was on Friday. Beyond that, find high pressure building quite strong. So, the UK Met looks like slate actually going through this it looks like most of these models are much more towards high pressure through the early part of next week compared to the uk there so um, gfs 6 a gets that high pressure to scandinavia brings in a not especially calm easterly wind then the high pressure goes into retrograde retrograde pulling out into the uh, atlantic looks like we're about to drop in uh, a northerly wind but another low comes racing in in a very excellent range so by the 10th of april we're actually looking cool wet and windy there is that yet another option within the gfs 6 m if you enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe and show everyone for doing that why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos, content, live streams, etc. Et 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 and uh, don't forget to tell your friends about Gas when we get to subscribe too. And thanks so much everyone for doing that. Around 90 subscribers gets us to 19.7k. So you could give us some. That'd be absolutely awesome. Thank you so much. Love it. So much. Right, GM, again, bring that weather system through the country on Friday. Showering out to breaks of rain, pushing through with it. And then into next week, high pressure building up. Through the west of Europe, a lot of dry weather there. The high pressure going further northwards today with the GM. So we do actually bring in a proper easterly there with the GM around the middle part of next week. That's got quite a chill to it as well, uh, I think. That's how look as we get to the end of next week with the uh, Canadian GM. That's Friday the 4th of April, day 10. We've got a big area of high pressure close to Iceland. And we're pulling in a pretty chilly, at the very, very least, if not a cold, northeasterly wind then. Goodness gracious. 
Certainly overnight for us. Maybe some wintry showers in the east with that. And then the east jam rounds it all, rounds it all off with a weather system coming in from off the Atlantic through the end of the week into the weekend. Looking rather unsettled for the north. Probably not too much rain, though, down the south. Next week, high pressure building strongly through the uh, country. Lots of dry weather to come with that. Bit of an easy throw, but not an especially cold uh, easterly. However, in the extended, the high pressure goes even further north and actually becomes a blocking feature. That could be a top of response to the uh, strapped warm. So eventually we start bringing some quite cold air really for the time of year from the east and from the northeast. Again, got a proper block there around Iceland. We're bringing the wind from uh, from quite a long way uh, east and north, uh, north of east as well with the origins of the air. Like the origins of the air is actually up here. And then flooding through uh, Europe almost east to northeasterly uh, winds. So the upper air temperatures are indeed looking cold there across most parts of northern and also western Europe. With that, and, you know, for the time of year, I mean, it's all comparative. So <laughs> it's not as cold as if that's the 8th of uh, January or the 8th of December, even the 8th of February. It's the 8th of April. So not as cold as that. But nevertheless, again, uh, for, for an east northeasterly flow, in April, that is pretty cold, and that's how we end up with the uh, ECM uh, midnight run as well. Once more, we're bringing most proper east northeasterly uh, winds, so looking cold and maybe quite wintry to be honest, certainly from a frost perspective. Um, and I won't rule out chance of wintry showers into eastern uh, areas on those uh, northeasterly winds. So, a cold and uh, for spring rather wintry ECM uh, midnight run there in the extended. This is the precipitation forecast based on that each run up to day 10 from Tometio.com. So wet weather coming southeast was at the end of the week. Then we're into showery district weekend. Most of rain in the north. Next week looking mostly dry. A few wintry showers there starting to push into the uh, southeast by the 2nd of April. Um, but they're really interesting stuff in terms of those colder east or east winds actually beyond day 10, which unfortunately we can't show you on those maps. <laughs> Never mind. Right, these are the up top the table within the ECM ensembles. Now, what's happening here? There we go. Uh, these are the up top the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. Gets us to the 4th of April. 17 members of the ECM ensembles with high press between Iceland and Norway. Winds coming in from the east. We've got 16, including the control of the operation run. High pressure a little bit further southwards, but we know still bring, bringing in quite a chilly or a cold east or east wind. We've got 11 with high pressure blocking between Iceland and Norway, bridging down the west. Europe. That'll be mostly dry, but not too bad by day, but chilly by night. And we've got 7 milder with high pressure to the south and the east, low pressure out to the northwest. The winds are coming up from the southwest. So it looks like the ECM ensembles have shifted more towards a blocked and colder direction for the beginning of April there. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. It gets us to the 9th of April. 35 members will be ECM ensembles. Still with high pressure, bringing a lot of dry weather. Could be a little bit chilly. And 16, clean control and the operation run, taking the high pressure more towards Greenland and Iceland, dropping a trough in Oceania, Scandinavia. And that keeps that cold north to north easterly flow going. So the ECM operation really pretty well supported at day 10, but its uh, idea of turning increasingly cold uh, at two weeks out is a little bit unsupported by its ensemble. So uh, that option hardly surprised me because it does look quite extreme for April, uh, to be honest. That option with all of that cold uh, coming in from the east of the northeast is a bit of an outlier synoptically within the ECM ensembles. Right, let's start going for uh, let's start going for CFS. So then we're done to these five hundred millibar height anomalies broken down into a weekly periods. So the first week period takes from the twenty fifth to the thirty first of March. Next week with high pressure to the south, low pressure away to the north, and we're bringing bringing in a flat westerly flow. We will be the first of the seventh of April. High pressure. To the north and northeast, round that winter coming in from an east to northeasterly direction, mostly dry but quite 
cold, I would have thought, with that. Week three! <laughs> Little PV8 at the 14th of April. Again, high pressure. Tim and North Atlantic going towards Greenland. Winds coming in from an easterly point of view. And then finally, week four rounds it all off. It's the 15th to 21st of April. From a block around Greenland, low pressure underneath it. Probably turning increasingly unsettled and could still be. <coughs> Oh, this, so sorry, everyone. Could still be quite uh, cold with that as well. A lot of blocking within the CFS over the next four weeks. How that all works out in terms of temperature and precipitation and whatnot. What not? That uh, remains to be seen. <laughs> I'm so sorry, everyone. Right, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Where well, drop a comment. Let's know what you think about this and all my videos. Because it don't get to press back down. So, whether it's get to subscribe to, make sure to show everyone for doing that. And again, if you can afford a little donation, guys, well, Cast well, it's GWV. Then, uh, please consider doing so. Thank you so much. Okay, well, tomorrow we have six day beauty and forecast, and there'll be a 10 to 14 day as well. I shall see you for that. My 10 to 14 day might be quite late tomorrow. I've got the MOT on my car. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, depending on how that goes, um, uh, uh, I might, I might, uh, be quite late with the, uh, with the 10 to 40 there, especially if I'm going to go off somewhere and drown my sorrows if it fails its MOT. No, I won't be doing that, but the, um, the, um, the 10 to 40 day tomorrow might be quite late, we'll see. Okay, we're done, so, uh, you enjoy the rest of your Tuesday for this one, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.